<laughs> Gotta stay hydrated, boys. So in this episode of Let's Debate, we're talking about romance, sex, love, and fantasy. And I figured for my sword, I'd probably grab the most phallic one I have for this, because, you know, irony or something. So let's just go ahead and... And now we have... A metaphor? I don't know. But let's go ahead and jump into the latest episode of Let's Debate, focusing around love, sex, fantasy. This is going to be demonetized. I can feel it in my bones. From Captured in Words, hello, Jay. Not every male slash female friendship needs to become a romance. Romance is part of the human experience, but it isn't mandatory. And it's possible for a male and female character to work together without falling in love. However, I feel like romance works best when it's a slow burn that gradually adds more and more sexual tension and frustration between the couple. One issue I have with sci-fi fantasy romance is that oftentimes the author makes it painfully obvious at the very beginning which characters will like each other and will end up up together without giving much of a reason as to why they like each other. Timing is key and both characters need to be built up so that the reader can naturally pick up on the chemistry between them. Also, relationships don't need to always be positive. I'd like to see relationships with more ups and downs, doubts, and arguments. Freaking love a good romance, but a lot of sci-fi fantasy keeps it too cliche and boring. I chose Jay's here, which if you haven't checked out his channel, you should. He's an amazing booktuber. I chose Jay's comment here because it kind of hit on a lot of things that various people hit on throughout the comments, and uh, I caught my phone with my thighs they're like spider-man uh <laughs> he hit, he basically summarized like four different points people kept hitting on again and again and again and this can basically be summarized as yeah a, a lot of fantasy and sci-fi just kind of has these insta loves or you know unrealistic representations of what a relationship is like and i completely agree especially with his point that it's kind of painfully obvious which characters are going to end up together how they are set up at the beginning of one book and series and you just know how it's going to be at the end when that's not how things happen. You could have someone you're not interested in and suddenly something happens, you become interested, someone you're interested in, and then something happens and you're like, wait, no, I don't want to be into you because it turns out that you, I don't know, burn orphanages. <laughs> I also do want to back the point that sometimes unrealistic love can be fun and serve a purpose of just escapism. So it depends on what you're looking for. If you want more realistic representations of love, these points all stand up, but I know a lot of people just kind of want an escapism romance where they can put themselves in the person who's being romanticized or doing the romancing's place. And, you know, then having an overly perfect uh, version of it can be very nice. And so I think that's also valid. I just want to take the moment to put that in here. So I actually, I just want to hit on this one because I think Jay just kind of hit like a broad shotgun spread of points people were hitting on a lot here. And I kind of chalk them all up into the unrealistic representations of romance we get in sci-fi fantasy. So well done, Jay, I agree. And you kind of gave me an out for not having to deal with a lot of repetitive answers, so. Magnifique! Can there just be more awkwardness in sex scenes? I mean, it's not always like something out of very land. Plus, it adds humor to the book. If handled correctly, yes, it would. And this kind of goes into the more other side of romance that Jay was hitting on, where it comes down to the physical act of love making. And yeah, sex can be awkward. Sex, especially the first time between two people, isn't always this like super high passionate, you know, release of tension. Sometimes things don't work out spectacularly. It's just part of being an adult and having multiple sexual partners. You're gonna find that. To me, this kind of comes down to like what comes across better in literature and like an engagement from a reader standpoint. And up until recently, we've had this more stoic version of fantasy where it's like things are supposed to be prim and proper. And in the last few decades, that's been slowly being chipped away at. And we're starting to see, I've actually can think of a couple like more awkward sex scenes that have happened, more graphically detailed ones, especially from First Law, um, in terms of like the, oh, what are you going to do with that? bodily fluid. This video is so demonetized. Uh, but, you know, this is changing. This is one of these things I think is coming up in the other side of what we've been talking about, and we're going to see it get there. It's just a matter of taking time and how adult you want your fantasy to be. Been seeing a lot of love interests slash protagonists actively stalking a person they like, typically with some thin pretext of I'm worried about them or they're doing something sketch and I need to find out what's up. Cut it out. If I found out a friend of mine was following me around all day without my knowledge, I'd have trouble trusting them ever again and i'm a dude imagine what it's like for a woman being stalked by a guy even if they were a friend that's a one-way ticket to get the hell out of my life town i lose respect for pretty much any character that engages in this and authors that put it out in their romance romance arcs with zero consequences I, I, I completely agree. This has bugged me for ages and I see people defending it all the time with characters who are like, yeah, but he's following her because he loves her. That's not 
normal. Even if I saw my significant other walking around town, I wouldn't follow them. I might, you know, walk up and say, hey, because I trust them and they're an individual I have a friendship or something with. That would be totally socially normal and fine. Be like, what's going on, dog? You want to grab a hot dog? Let's do that. But instead, there's this like thin pretext of like, I don't know exactly what they're doing on this day in the market. I'm justified in following them for hours. Why? No, you're not. That makes me think you're weird. Of course, throughout the narrative, it ends up working out they were right to do so every single time. Um, or it's like they weren't right to do so in that very instance of stalking, but it turns out their suspicions, their broader broader suspicions turned out being right all this time. Hate that. It's, it's so cliche and not uh, a proper representation of how that would work out in reality. Even if a platonic dude friend of mine who was straight followed me around because I was doing something weird. I would not talk to him again. I've had fans, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you this, I've had fans follow me around for a minute and then come up and say, hey, that's more okay? Because I get you're like working up the courage to be like, oh, like I recognize you, I wanna say hi, that's fine. Keep at least six feet away, please, we're in a pandemic. But if it's someone I know, if you follow me for even like three minutes and don't come up and say, hey, that's too much. That's an invasion of privacy. It's like one of the few instances where it's like the better you know someone, the less of an excuse they have. If you know someone, they should come up and be like, hey doc, what's going on? Rather than like, what are they doing in this library? How dare they be here? Ah! I'm not saying all instances of following ever in fantasy are bad. Obviously there are times where it's like, oh, we see this person with a bloody knife and uh, we should probably figure out what's going on there. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about specifically in books where it's purely just like the protagonist sees their love interest and just starts following them. If you think that's okay to do to someone, I have very bad news for you. I'd really like to see love triangles with unconventional endings. Maybe all three end up together in a polyamorous situation. Maybe the two love interests give up on the main character and possibly end up with each other. I hate love triangles is very popular in this day and age, but I think they could really enhance the story if done differently. I agree, Avery. I think it's more of just, I hate love triangles done the same way, where there's the clear preferred member of the person, and then there's the clear not preferred person. And it's like, who are they gonna end up? Oh, they're gonna end up with this person? Who would have known? And also that's not a love triangle. A love triangle would be if these two people also are into each other. Instead, we just get this person's into that, and that person, it's more like a love line, but there's like a point in the middle of the line, because these two people usually don't like each other, or you have any kind of relationship, so. Yeah, agreed. I don't see any pregnancies in sci-fi fantasy. Do they all just pull out at the last second? That does not work. I wanna be very clear here on the channel. I am not condoning what this person is saying and saying that pulling out is the, okay, Sex ed with Daniel now. That just seems weird to me. Are they using contraceptives? Sex often slash should have consequences. Um, so, okay, one, don't tell people that sex always needs to have consequences. Sex for fun is totally okay as long as you're safe and protected. But what I will say is that you are hitting on something here that is fairly right, though in real life history, there have been certain plants people have used that like reduce fertility and could explain away some of this. There is uh, actually in the Wheel of Time an explanation of a tea someone drinks that acts as a bit of a contraceptive and stuff like that. Um, so there are books that do take this step, although, you know, with some people it does take a long time to get pregnant. I had one family member who took them years. So yeah, there is some realism here as well. If it's like, oh, it just explained away that these aren't the most fertile people ever. But then again, is that consistently for every character? I don't know. This is an interesting topic. I'm glad I chose this one because it's going to result in a very interesting comment section and a demonetized video. Even though I'm a sucker for the friends to lovers trope, I hate when there's an ensemble cast of characters and by the end of the book, each of them is paired off in even couples. It's so unrealistic and I wish there were more references to boys slash girl or spouses outside of the main gang. Also, there are so many stories where we have three main characters and I can't think of a single time when the trio consists of two girls girls and one guy. It's always two guys and one girl. Why? And why does one guy always fall in love with the girl? Stop it. It's kind of obnoxious to always have like the same setups, copy, print, and once they're pointed out to you, you'll see them a lot more often. And I also don't like, uh, really especially where it's like, oh, this two guys and girl have been friends for years, but it just happens so that right all this dramatic stuff's going on, one guy decides that like, Acha, I've been in love with you this whole time, I'm gonna tell everyone about it. First of all, 
timing. Second of all, it's just like a consistent thing where it's like every time this guy flips right now and usually other guys like okay with it sometimes he has a problem with it but it's like clear as i said before which guy's gonna work out with with ah, it's just kind of buying that love triangle and it's just like i don't know it's just i don't like i i completely agree here i don't like that often in fantasy you can't have male female relationships without it ending up with someone being paired off and no outside of the main cast spouses is another unrealistic thing. I have a group of friends. There's one of them whose significant other I don't know very well, doesn't hang out with us all the time. That's a realistic representation here. I can say from a writing standpoint, narratively, it's adding a character you'll have to handle and can be like seen as something that can be cut, cut down on page time. But to me, this is going to be worth it because it can add a level of realism and stand outish necessity words from a lot of your competition right now, but you know, I could see it going either way. I am just very tired of these same dynamics, especially the whole paired off problem. I like Joey and Phoebe's end friendship a lot more than I like how these people are paired off. Ross and Rachel are a bad couple. Monica and Chandler relationship goals. Boom, I said it. Don't at me. I quite like a bit of romance slash sex scenes in my fantasy if they are what written well, though not many authors can pull it off. What annoys me a lot is the <sighs> What annoys me a lot about it though is when an author decides to write such scenes but does it in an unrealistic or unwoman friendly way. For example, immediate sex without sort of foreplay, romanticized R word, unrealistic love triangles, etc. I think what largely stems from this is a lot of authors are afraid of stepping into what they think of as pornography territory, uh, but they don't want to spend a lot of time with the foreplay and things like that because they feel like they're writing erotica of some sort. I think that's ridiculous because it's just a realistic part of a lot of people's sex lives. And it kind of bothers me that that's seen as like pornographic, but the idea of just jumping in into like pound town isn't, that's unrealistic for a lot of people. There are some people who do like that there are some people who don't do what you're going to do have fun to ignore the fact that for most people foreplay is a rather large part of their sexuality and lives uh it, it's a bit strange that we just see that written out because that seems more profane to people for some reason this is what i just like because it's just love triangles are the worst idea anyone has ever come up with <laughs> I would be interested to see, hear from Matty Boy whether you'd actually like a tr love triangle with a different dynamic or if just no, the entire concept of love triangles you hate. Everyone memed about Sam, Frodo, Mary, and Pippin having homoerotic moments throughout their journey, but I feel like the more problematic trend is modern fantasy adapting the cold, hands-off, macho friendship of modern times despite that not being accurate to any pre-1900s culture. It's kind of messed up how fantasy series have emulated medieval-esque warfare, clothing, garments, etc. This is 100,000% true for anyone who pays attention to historic texts and information. Men before the gay panic that just infiltrated our culture for like nearly a century and luckily seems to be finally dying away, uh, were much more affectionate to each other. Hugs, holding hands, were totally socially acceptable. And then everyone was just terrified that someone might think they were gay and so they don't do that anymore. Male culture is way less affectionate and all that's okay for some reason is a firm pat on the bottom at sporting events. <laughs> uh, this is going away. It's okay to hug a dude. It's not going to make you gay. That's not how this works. And uh, we are seeing this go away, but you're right. Uh, there should be due to the time that a lot of these uh, fantasy books are set in more male on male affection that is not sexual. It's just how they show friendship. Not every bad guy has to be a rapist. Just saying. This annoys the hell out of me. Just because you're willing to like pick someone's pocket doesn't mean you're going to then sexually assault them. Those are two very different lines to cross. And eh, well, I will also say that not everyone who's just a pickpocket is just a pickpocket. But there does seem to be this kind of lazy morality trend where it's like if someone's evil, they're willing to go 100%, 1000% down that rabbit hole evil when that's just not true. I mean, there's there's news stories online about people breaking into someone's house to rob them and then they like find them having a seizure or something and then they call an ambulance and they get them help because they're like, yeah, I was going to rob them, but I'm not like a monster who's going to let someone die. I feel like female love interests are increasingly the fearless warrior type where they are good fighters but can often lack personality otherwise. Not always, of course. It often seems that putting a strong female character in makes authors think they've ticked a feminism box, but having properly written and developed female love interests is often just more important than seeing them beat someone up. Being strong is not a personality trait, basically. Yeah, this is something you see some authors doing, but once again, I think, I 
think right now, many male authors are quickly learning the difference of. I've seen more and more male authors not just have these, I can shoot a bow, swing a sword, therefore feminism, instead actually having them be well-rounded, motivated, and with agency. That's really all people have been asking for. It's not to make them like unrealistically strong or say that like women can physically match men, which, you know, it's a bell curve. Some can, some can't. Ronda Rousey kick my ass. It's just kind of this like, yeah, there's bell curves here. What people are asking for is to be treated like human beings and you know it's it's strange it takes people that long to realize that's just being asked for but it's being realized now so that's good sounds horrible but the exploration of more unhealthy relationships would be nice so many of us have gone through them show me people who are obsessive accusatory have horrible trust issues cheat on their partner etc make it even more complicated by having the protagonist do th these things relationships in fantasy tend to just feel too boring and oftentimes too cookie cutter relationships can be challenged not just by the impending apocalypse but by toxic i forgot to hit read more hold up i have to open the app because i had a screenshot and I, I read the whole thing when i was originally going through the questions but I, I didn't have it now ready and open so that's my bad with the screenshot Oopsie doopsie, oopsie doopsie poopsie, oopsie poopsie doopsie poopsie. Not just by the impending apocalypse, but also by toxic participants. I just did all that for the word participants. No, this is completely true. And I actually think there is a literal benefit to reading about more toxic, abusive, uh, unhealthy relationships, and that's not because I'm advocating for their existence, but I've talked to multiple people in my lifetime who, through reading about fictional relationships that had these traits, realized that they were in relationships that reflected those, and either then made changes to their relationships if these problems weren't that bad, or left. And that is part of the whole broader conversation of how fiction, sci-fi, fantasy can genuinely help you improve as a person, learn from, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fiction is a means of education through entertainment, uh, if done right. And to me, I completely agree with this. I think having these representations of these problems is good as long as the author remembers to portray them as a negative. Because I have seen abusive, manipulative relationships in literature be like, yay, good thing, when that's no, but you know, that's the hopeful. But again, as we become better aware of mental health and these problems in society, more and more authors, hopefully, will, rep will represent these things better. There's kind of a theme of this video I didn't expect to come about where it's like, hey, uh, we're getting all better at a lot of this. We're still not there, but we're getting there. And I kind of really like and appreciate that. Uh, and it's, it's coming more and more clear to me the more I think about these topics. So yay. Anyway, guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And there's going to be a pinned comment where I ask you what topic would you like this to focus on next? And if you don't like these being more focused on general topics, just let me know. And if there's the majority of people saying that, we'll go back to the generalized less debates. But if no, you like this, just let me know what topic you'd like to see in the future in that pinned comment. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.